Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Allahümme salli ala Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Dear brothers and sisters, ayyuhal ikhvat ve akhavat. Again, we are continuing the ders of the tafsir al-Qur'an, interpretation of the Qur'an at al-Hidayah Masjid. The, this is the weekly ders after Salatul Fajr at al-Hidayah Masjid. Last week we stopped at قوله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما هو بقول شاعر قليلا ما تؤمنون And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says It's not the speech of a poet Little do you believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ولا بقول كاهن قليلا ما تذكرون nor it is the speech of a soothsayer, as a sorcerer, a magician. Little do you reflect. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming and telling us that this speech of his is from the most supreme source, which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is none of the creations none of the creations nay kalla wa alfu kalla it can never be why because if it were the speech of a creation let us take the two categories of the most powerful sources which the arabs at the time held in high esteem revered, respected at most that of a poet and that of a soothsayer. So the Arabs at the time, as I said, were very eloquent, rhetoric, articulate in speech. They vied one another, they competed one another and they challenged one another in a contest. Who can compose the best poem. And when it comes to the soothsayer, the magician, whatever the soothsayer said, the fortune teller, وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ They believe it in that and they took it as something which is actually holy and noble. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates both of these. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ الشَّاعِرِ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Little do you believe in the first one, which is قول الشاعر, the speech of a poet, and little do you reflect in the speech of the soothsayer. Now, both of them, at the time, the disbelievers, actually, the idolaters, at the time, they actually revered these two. They never have had any other source from where they heard something which is different. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the noblest of all creation, خير خلق الله. على الإطلاق صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه. When Allah subhanahu wa taala sent the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم recited the Quran. And the people of the time, they were already prepared to actually conceive that, and their perception actually would be very much different to what they were accustomed and used to, which was the poem and the words of the fortune teller or the soothsayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tanzilum min rabbil alameen. Tanzilum min rabbil alameen. It is the revelation of the Lord of the universe. The revelation, this Quran, is the revelation of the Lord of the universe. 
In this, I promised last week, actually, to say something about it that Imam Ahmed mentioned. He says, حدثنا بن المغيرة حدثنا صفوان حدثنا شراح بن عبيد الله قال قال عمر بن الخطاب Now Imam Ahmed narrates in his musnad He says that Umar ibn al-Khattab said We you know The second khalif خليفة خليفة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خليفة رسول الله The first khalif is Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه وأرضاه The second one is Umar رضي الله عنه الفاروق الذي فرق الله به بين الحق والباطل Umar al-Faruq رضي الله عنه وأرضاه says as Imam Ahmed mentions he says خرجت أتعرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قبل أن أسلم He says that I was looking for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and actually following him behind him the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he wanted to accost and stop the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم maybe الله أعلم so he says that when I was following the footsteps of the Prophet وسلم, before I became Muslim, before I embraced Islam, Then I found him. He already entered into the, into the masjid. Umar ibn al-Khattab is following actually the Prophet sallallahu alayhi behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is coming from everywhere, every corner, he wanted to stop the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already entered the masjid. Umar radiallahu anhu stops. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the masjid. He says, فَقُمْتُ خَلْفَهُ And I stood behind him. Meaning, behind him, he, he the Prophet وسلم, is in the masjid, in the mosque. Umar is standing behind him. What does Umar do? What do you expect Umar would be doing? And he says that the Prophet وسلم, started to pray. فَاسْتَفْتَحَ سُورَةَ الْحَاقَةَ He started with reciting Surah Al-Haqqa, the surah we are now interpreting. The one we are reading now. And he says, فَجَعَلْتُ أَعْجَبُ مِنْ تَأْلِيفِ الْقُرْآنِ He says that I was taken by the Qur'an, how it is composed, how it is put together the words of the Qur'an. He says, فَجَعَلْتُ أَعْجَبْ مِنْ تَأْلِيفِ الْقُرْآنِ And I really admired, he says, I admired the composition of the Qur'an. How the words of the Qur'an are put together. Omar doesn't know at this stage because he is not Muslim at that time, he doesn't know that it is from the Lord of the Universe. The Lord of the Universe, Rabbul Alameen. He says, Qala faqultu. He speaks to himself. He said, I say to myself, Hadha wallahi sha'ir. This is by Allah, sha'ir, a poet. Hadha wallahi sha'ir. He is a poet. كما قالت قريش As Quraysh actually accused him that he is a poet. Indeed, definitely by Allah. This man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a poet. And then he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued reciting. And he recited the Prophet ﷺ recited 
إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ The Prophet ﷺ is reciting إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ Indeed, this Qur'an, this revelation, this message, this book, Qur'an, is the words, the statement, the words of a noble messenger given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرُ Indeed, indeed, it is not the speech of a poet. قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ Little do you believe. And then, Umar, because what he said to himself, he was asking himself, has already been answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Allah wants Umar to embrace Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing, paving the way for Umar radiallahu anhu to accept Islam. When he said to himself, he whispered to himself that indeed, this definitely is the word of a poet. This is a man, is a poet, as Quraysh said. As Quraysh accused him, this man is a poet, definitely. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite this ayah, which says it is not the, the, word, the speech of a poet. It is the speech, the words of a noble messenger that was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Umar says, I post a little bit. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reciting. And I said to myself, he says, no, he's not a poet. He is a soothsayer, a magician. These are the words of a soothsayer. And then he says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited, وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ And it is neither the, the speech of a soothsayer. Little do you reflect. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued and recited, تنزيل من رب العالمين. It is the revelation of the Lord of the universe. ولو تقول علينا بعض الأقاويل لأخذنا منه باليمين ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين. فما منكم من أحد عنه حاجزين إلى آخر السورة. and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم recited until the end of the surah. then عمر says and I thought of of what I have been hearing at the time and he says فوقع الإسلام في قلبي and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has widened the bosom, the heart of Umar radiallahu anhu and that he accepted Islam. And the light of Islam entered into the heart of, the, of Umar radiallahu anhu. And Umar says, فَوَقَعَ الْإِسْلَامُ فِي قَلْبِي كُلَّ مَوْقِعِ And Islam has hit my heart. Islam has entered, penetrated into my heart and profoundly into the heart of Umar radiallahu anhu and encompassed Umar's soul and heart that Islam is the truth. Then Umar accepts Islam. Umar accepts Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ That the one we mentioned now was تنزيل, 
تنزيل من رب العالمين تنزيل من رب العالمين that is the revelation from the lord of the universe now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the following ayat an ayah a verse which is clear evidence a proof for everyone who denies the quran a non muslim anyone a non muslim who denies the quran that it is the revelation of the lord of the universe tanzilu min rabbil alamin this ayah actually is an honor and dignity and a proof of evidence of the truth of the noble quran that it is from the lord of the universe that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recites it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ولو تقول علينا بعض الأقاويل. and if he, the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, had forged this discourse, he made up this discourse, this Quran, this message, and thereafter ascribed it to us and attributed that to us. what does that mean? If the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah forbid never ever 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 it happens if if it happened then what would happen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us now that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions this verse in the Quran means that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a messenger and it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why first and foremost how come the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions this verse the verse if you recite it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and if he forged the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the discourse made up invented this message and therefore ascribed it to us meaning he attributed that to us and he said this is from allah while it were not then what would happen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us but this verse as i said is a clear evidence that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a messenger and he was not seeking any personal gain for himself for example Now today those who want to have superiority global superiority authority sovereignty that they actually dominate the whole universe with something they come up with ideology a principle a system they never mention in their teachings in their system in their principles they never mention something which is against them or something which actually might apparently reduce and lower their rank and level never they mention the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam This Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How come the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions this in the Quran and also not only this he mentions tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed Abi Lahab. Cursed the hands of Abi Lahab. let the hands of abu lahab perish let the hands of abu lahab perish it is tabbat yada abi lahab surah al masad we know we read we recite every day now abu lahab was the uncle of the prophet sallallahu is there anyone who mentions in a system which he came up with 
to dominate the whole world, the whole universe, something which is against his own uncle? No. No. As one da'i, caller to Islam actually, said, put it, he said, look, if this Quran were not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forbid, and Muhammad's, if it were Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would have put the title of, of, of his mom, his mother, Amina, instead of Maryam. We have surah to Maryam. Maryam bint Imran, who is from Min Bani Israel. So, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted something else, he would have put his own mother, Amina, his daughter, Fatima, a whole chapter by the name of Fatima, Amina, Aisha, Khadija. We never find that. Because this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is following strictly the guidelines and instructions of the Prophet sallallahu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's following the guidelines and instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the second point that none can attribute a statement to Allah and goes away with it. That's the second. The second ruling that we take from this ayah, which is, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَطِينِ The second one is, one we mentioned, the second proof of evidence is that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that none can attribute to a statement to him, to Allah. And that person will go away with it. Never. Never ever. If you look at those false prophets who came, like um, um, uh, Sajjah, the lady who, who, who uh, claimed that she's a prophetess, like Musaylamat al kadhab the liar from Yamama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them immediately. What happened to Musaylama? Musaylama the liar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him the liar. He's a liar, Musaylama. Because he was competing with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he claimed to be a prophet, Musaylama. He's well known. One day what happened, he heard that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always used to ask um, his, his followers about what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has done. And he always wanted to challenge and compete with him and do the same. So what happened, look at this, look at this, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disowns, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes those liars who claim to be prophets. One day he, he asked his followers, one of his followers, they told him that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayru khalqillah, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi, Muhammad al-Amin, they used to call him Muhammad al-Amin, the trustworthy, and then they rejected him. So they heard, he heard that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spit in a well, he spat in a well. Then, the well, the water came up full. There was no water. It was very shallow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the water filled the well. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spat in the well, a miracle. Uh, Musaylama heard about it. Musaylama wanted to do the same. He came to a well, and the well was shallow as well. And then when he spat in the well, Musaylama, this liar, when he spat in the well, that water, the small water which was in the well, then emptied, evaporated. 
against what he wanted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ashamed him. Another time he heard that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa took a baby and the baby was bald, had no hair. His mother wrote him to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited and spat on his face, on his head, the baby's head. And hair came, grew on the head of the baby immediately. Miracle. لِخَيْرِ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ The best of all creation, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. And then he said, Musaylama says, bring me a child which is bald, who is bald. They brought to him and then he spat on this child. The small hair which was on the child's head, then all were actually shaven. Shaven. He became bolder. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does never leave that. And then the third, it is actually refutation of those who claim it that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa invented it. It can't be. It can't be. It can never ever be. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never spare that person to go away with it. A person who says that I have a message from the Almighty Allah and then that is not the case. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had forged this discourse and thereafter ascribed it to us, we would surely have seized him by the right hand. The right hand, they said, and the commentators say, then we would catch him with the right hand. Meaning, the right hand, as I said earlier, is actually an, an example of power that we would seize him very hard, hard very harshly and gripped him very harshly and seized him. So that's not the case, of course. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And then severed his life vein. Severed, cut his life vein. The life vein is the one they said which connects to, to the heart. The vein that connects to the heart, and that we would cut if anything that would be actually against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. فَمَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ عَنْهُ حَاجِزِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And not one of you would have been able to withhold us from doing so. None would prevent us from catching him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this is a proof, this ayah is an evidence that the Quran is Tanzeel Rabbil Alameen. The, the Lord of the universe revealed it to the noblest of all creation who has been entrusted with the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Aminul Wahi. Tanzeel Rabbil Alameen, if anyone doesn't believe in that, this Quran, this revelation is from the Lord of the universe. That person is kafir. That person has disbelieved. Tanzilum min Rabbil Alameen. It is, of course, indeed, Tanzilum min Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the blessings of the Qur'an. Allahumma ja'al al-Qur'an rabi'a qulubina wa nura sudurina wa jala'i ahzanina wa jala'a ahzanina wa dhahaba ghumumina wa humumina ya Rabbal Arsh al-Azim. Shifa'a sudurina ya Rabb. Oh Allah, oh Allah, make the Qur'an the cure and the healing for our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from every evil. 
from the worst of the diseases. Allahumma inna nas'aluka, ya Rabb, ya Hayyu, ya Qiyyum. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afu wal-afiyah fi dunya wal-akhirah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afu wal-afiyah fi dunya wal-akhirah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afu wal-afiyah fi dunya wal-akhirah. اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجدام ومن سيء الأسقام تحصنا بذي العزة والجبروت واعتصمنا برب الملكوت وتوكلنا بالحي الذي لا يموت اللهم يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وإلى لقاء آخر until we meet إن شاء الله next time with the another Insha'Allah, completion of the surah. We complete the surah. A couple of verses remaining. Insha'Allah, we hope that you stay, insha'Allah, um, online and stay tuned. And insha'Allah, we continue the interpretation of this surah and the other surahs. Wa billahi tawfiq wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam.